To teach today's lesson, let's go ahead and take a look at an example. Brittany makes money creating GarageBand songs on her iMac computer. She charges her clients a $50 intake fee and then $10 per minute of song length. Describe her fee scale um, both algebraically and graphically. Now the intake fee is going to get charged whether or not she creates any music at all. This is the initial appointment with her clients um, where she gets to know them, she learns their music genres, she writes down their wishes, and she tries to discern what's going to make them the happiest. The $10 is for minutes of music created. Her fee is going to be equal to, what's the very first thing, even if she doesn't write any music, if she actually talks to the people and intakes them. $50. Right, exactly. There's $50 just for her to have the initial appointment and take down the information. And if they call her an hour later and say, forget it, she still has their $50, even if she hasn't created any music. All right, now, then she gets paid for the amount of music that she produces. And she's going to get $10 per every minute of music. So $10 times the number of minutes of music. No algebraist is going to look at this and say that this is appropriate because it's too long. We're going to want to code it up a little bit more symbolically. So we're going to let F stand for the fee. We're going to just write 50. We're going to lose the dollar sign because that's understood to be there. And then we're going to put plus 10 times M. We're going to forget all the rest of this stuff. And we're going to just remember that M stands for music, minutes of music. Okay. All right. So what we have right here is an algebraic description of her fee scale. All right, let's take a look at a graph here. This is the Music Maker fee scale, and we're going to break the vertical axis right here so that we can begin at $50, because that's the least amount of money that she's going to earn. Um, the horizontal axis will represent the length of the music in minutes, and we'll take it out to about seven minutes. After the intake, the lowest amount of money she can make, thank you dear, is $50. All right, now let's say she just does a little one minute song, very, very simple, kind of elegant thing. She's gonna make $50 plus another 10 because she produced a one minute song. So there will be uh, data point right there. At two minutes, she'll make $20 for the song and she will make the additional 50, so she will be up to 70. And at three minutes, she's going to make 30 plus the initial 50, and so she'll be at 80. And I think very quickly you can see that a pattern evolves here, so I don't need to keep plotting. I can just, oh yeah, we've got all four of those data points on the same line. All right, so we have a continuous rate of slope. Now, notice I did not connect, or I did not extend it down this way, because you can't have negative minutes of song, and you can't have negative dollars. It makes no sense. This is a first quadrant grid. Sometimes they're vertical. But they will almost always cross the y-axis somewhere. Okay? And that is called your y-intercept. So this is your y-intercept. And the slope is the constant rate of change on your line. In other words, it's how steep your line is. Now, this is a positive slope because it's going uphill. All right, let's just pick two points here. And let's find out how much steepness we have. Like yesterday, we saw, and make sure you're focusing in real tight on this, okay, please? If we go from this first data point up here to this second data point, we're going to go up $10 and over one hour, right? So the rise would be equal to up $10, and the run would be over one hour. All right, let's see if it's the same thing here from the second data point to the third data point. Yeah, from 60 to 70 is a rise of $10 and a run of another dollar. So indeed, look, we've got the same thing happening over and over and over and over and over again. 
So we would say that the slope is equal to 10. Y-intercept is 50. Now, I want you to come up here and look at the equation that we came up with. Both of those numbers are in that equation. You see? The slope, the steepness of the line is beside this variable. And the y-intercept is, is out here all by itself with no variable attached to it at all. Okay? All right, now, let's take a look at this. If I put that number of minutes to zero, this whole thing's going to blank out, right? Because 10 times zero is nothing. Boom. So if the number of minutes is zero, by George, by Jingo, the fee is 50. So as soon as you set the x to zero, you will find the spot where the line touches the y-axis. It's kind of magical. It always works. If x is zero, um, your y-intercept will appear. So if I force that x to zero, my y will become 50. So the y-intercept is at 0, 50. And lots of math people will say, oh, the y-intercept is 50. But what it means is, graphically, it's crossing the y-axis at 50, and that's what its coordinate would look like. All righty. Now, I need to blow your mind a little bit. These variables right here were specific to this particular problem, the fee problem. In general, the general form for this is called the slope-intercept form, and it looks like this. We let the y... Can you see that? Yes. We let the y... Be the dependent variable and it is always by itself on the left. Like on your graphing calculators, you know how you have that y equals button? You notice how they always, always, always on graphing calculators set it y equals something, y equals something. Because this form of equation is so everywhere, it's actually hardwired into your graphing calculator. All right, then they call the y-intercept the b. I don't know why they selected that letter, but they did. And then the slope, they call that um, m. And then the independent variable, which in this case was minutes, they always let that be x. And then they commute this. I do not know why. But in every math book, in every country, all over the world, no matter where you go, if you say to someone, put that in slope-intercept form, or what's the slope-intercept equation of that line, it will always be in the form y equals mx plus b, where, yeah. and let me reiterate here, m, 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 m